Hello and welcome to the video. In this video, I'm going to show you what I've done to set up an RC radio control to control my Parrot Disco. Now the Parrot Disco is something that we looked at about six, seven weeks ago, and it's a pretty cool flying wing. Available now for about $300, £300, but when it initially came out, it was about three or four times that price, which is surprisingly why nobody bought it. <clears throat> However, it's a lot cheaper now, so lots and lots of people have taken the plunge, including myself, and it's a fantastic wing. It produces beautiful video, and it's a wing that even non-wing pilots can fly very simply. It's got lots of lots of intelligence inside. Now, there's two mods that people tend to do on these models. One's a 4G mod, which is rather than use a Wi-Fi connection, you use the cellular data network to give you essentially unlimited range, so long as the craft is in sight of the cellular network of a 4G. And the other one, which is this one, is how you can connect and control it using a traditional RC radio. Now the documentation on this that's kicking around on the web and the reason it's taking me so long to get around to this video. So thank you to everyone <laughs> that's been very patient and going, please show me how to do this. It's taken me a bit to figure out. This is the documentation that is on the Parrot website and it is superficial to say the least. So let me go through every single step. I'm also going to share the model memory that I'm using on my QX7 radio. So if you're using an FR Sky radio, you can download that and that's going to save you a lot of chimping about trying to set all the channels up on your radio too. So without any further ado, let me show you and talk you through every single step that you need to do to get this all working. It's actually really straightforward, which is why I think everyone's just kind of avoided talking about it. But let me show you exactly what I've done to get this all working here. So the first thing I do before you start wiring anything in or reaching for a spare receiver is to set up the model memory on your radio. Again, I'm sharing my QX7 setup that I'm using successfully here underneath. So have a check in the description and you'll find the link. But what you need to do is you need to set the controls in this particular order. Now you don't necessarily have to because actually you know what you can kind of teach the parrot disco when you go through the rc calibration pieces in a moment uh, which channel is which but if you do it like this it's pretty much mapped straight out of the box you want channel one to be aileron or roll control channel two to be elevator or pitch channel three to be the throttle channel four to enable uh, loiter mode that's the one which just flies in a big circle and then one three position switch on channel five that's going to select your flight modes in the low pwm position i.e near a thousand microseconds in length it's going to give you the standard setup assisted flight mode with the sky controller if it's in the middle value so around 1500 it's going to be assisted mode but actually allow you to fly via the radio control and in the high position i.e kind of towards 2000 microseconds it's going to give you manual mode and that's going to be with the radio control as well I would recommend adding an extra two, one for initiating landing and takeoff and a couple of extra ones, one for emergency and one for return to home, which in my parlance is actually the same thing, but I put them right next to each other so I can catch one or the other if I have a problem. Next thing you need to do then is to bind the receiver. I bound it with a D16 protocol, only sending those eight channels that I've got set up. There's no point in binding for 16 channels when the other eight aren't going to be sending any data. Then you need to plug the receiver into the port at the back of the Chuck flight controller that's in the middle of the Parrot Disco. Watch the polarity. You need to make sure that the signal is towards the center. Uh, it's actually marked on the top of mine, which is good. And it will support lots of different single wire protocols. But I'm using S bus here and it seems to work perfectly. But using S bus also means that if you really wanted to, you could go mad and you could maybe put something like Crossfire or something else in here that can be set up for S bus too. Last tip on this slide is when you are mounting the receiver, do not put it on top of the Chuck flight controller itself. On the top is actually the GPS that's looking up. So you don't want anything interfering with that GPS lock on the sky. There is a little bit of space behind the battery. So I would recommend putting it in there. Just double check that your central gravity is still okay. But putting it out the back means it's far away from the Wi-Fi antennas and also the GPS receiver as well. Okay, next bit that we need to do is to actually go through the calibration routine in the FreeFlight app. 
So fire up the free flight app on your device and under where it says my parrot looks like a little of the controller tap on that and it'll come up and initially it'll show you the sky controller layout and you think oh my god it's not working uh, but make sure that the green light is on the receiver and that it's bound to the radio but if you click on that and then click the down back button where it says sky controller it'll actually show you that there is an s bus connection active there'll be a little green light by the side so you can click on that place all of the sticks in their middle position and also put the throttle at the low position then click the calibration button in the lower left hand corner double check that everything's okay and then click calibrate and it will show you all of the channels now if you set the model up or you've installed the model memory that I've supplied properly as you move all of the controls then you should start to see them moving on the screen so you'll have the roll control you'll have the elevator control and you'll have all of the others as well now by default here you can see that all of them are matched and you can see them all working with the exception of the emergency and the return to home. So any ones that aren't actually mapped don't worry about that you can tell the Parrot Disco which ones you want to use just click on it click configure and then move the control that you want to assign. So this is my return to home. So just by flicking that a couple of times, it figures that out. So there it is turning on and off and go for emergency. So click on it again, just move the switch I want for emergency and that is all done. So it's that simple. So when you press back, it'll warn you that you need to put all of the controls into the middle position. Um, I would, if you find uh, that the control surfaces are out then I would use the trims on the radio or the sub trim on the aileron channel just to get everything lined up on the model and then go through the calibration routine again just to make sure it's okay if you're coming out of this the free flight app will warn you to put all the controls in the middle position and put everything down and don't worry about that that's just making sure that when you come out of this that you don't immediately start to fire up the model and start the engine and other bits and pieces so once you're out of it then you can use that three position flight mode switch to control how the model is going to fly in the low position it's going to be controlled by the sky controller and the free flight app just as you've done before in the middle position it's going to allow you to fly with the radio control but in the stabilized mode so it's again very very docile and in the top position it's going to give you the ability to do loops and rolls and fly aerobatically with the radio control but just be careful of that because it does mean that you have got more chance of something going horribly wrong couple of things to think about if you're going to set this up first of all think about how you want your failsafe to work with the parrot chuck flight controller i've got mine set up so that in the event of a problem with the radio it immediately sets the mode channel to be stabilized mode with the sky controller that way it just kind of falls back to the standard stuff also by default the elevator control appears to be backwards and i think that's just because that's the way it kind of works on the sky controller I would probably, if you are a traditional wing person and you want to fly with a radio, that's going to confuse you an awful lot. So I would personally reverse that. Uh, that might make it a little bit easier for you to fly. Be aware that the throttle will not become active. You won't be able to essentially arm the craft until you have the GPS lock. So wait for the LED, the airspeed sensor LED bit at the front to go green. Um, and do all that stuff so the flight process and the pre-flight checks are exactly the same you need that gps lock before you can play with all this goodness personally i would probably launch it using the sky controller anyway and then once it's up take control with the radio but this gives you the choice to do it whichever way you want again mount the receiver as far away from the chuck as possible because up there you have the GPS reception and you also have the big Wi-Fi antennas embedded in the foam that's going to be sending back your FPV signal. And finally, before you fly, double check that you can change the modes with that three position switch and that everything is working okay with that extra little bit of complexity in the model. So hopefully that helps those of you that were interested in this and hopefully now you can do it to your own model without a lot of messing about.
If you found that video useful or like the content, then please hit the like and subscribe button down below. If you want to go the extra step, you can become a Patreon of the Painless 360 channel and help provide support for what I do here. All the videos created here are put into playlists, so if you're interested in a particular topic, have a look at the playlist, and they all are organised in there to make them easier to use. If you're not sure if there's a video for your particular problem or topic you want to know more about, then add Painless360 to the Google search term that you're interested in, and that should find the video, article, or content about the particular thing that you're interested in having a look at.